Hello all. So welcome to the first session of the practice of decision making for ZAT. Uh, so in this session, we'll be uh, looking at uh, certain questions which are picked up from the actual ZAT papers, and I'll take you through the thought process which is you know supposed to be involved when we answer these kind of questions, so that you know we just start getting used to. Uh, the complete thought process that we have to implement in the examination. Be careful about the certain points which uh, we should be implementing the exam to make sure that our decisions turn out to be correct or uh, we end up getting the right answer. So let's look at uh, the first question for today. Now this caselet uh, talks about uh, Vimla is a domestic help for Shreya and uh, her neighbor Padma. Both live in a posh gated community. So I understand that Vimla is a Domestic help for both Shreya and Padma. Vimla not only cleans the house but also cooks for both the families. Okay. Uh, Shreya treasures Vimla ever since she has joined her family four years ago. So Shreya has been a loyal house help to Vimla. Okay. Uh, so Vimla joined uh, Padma's house uh, this year. Okay. So fair enough. Now. One evening, Shreya was trying to pay the pizza delivery and was surprised to find that five, a few 500 rupee notes were missing from her purse that she was sure uh, were there earlier. She wanted, she wants to ascertain if someone has stolen the money on reflecting the following, uh, the following facts uh, across her mind. Okay. Now, option A, uh, point number A says in last one year, Shreya had noticed cash missing on three occasions, which is clearly indicating that the cash is missing. Okay. Uh, Shreya's husband also shared that a few notes were missing, uh, you know, were missing train his wallet, uh, though he was not sure if they were stolen, which is again somewhere pointing out the probability of uh, someone being, uh, you know, someone stole, you know, stealing the money altogether. Right now, her eldest son has been pestering Shreya for, po for more pocket money for the last three weeks, and in the last few days, he had stopped doing so. Now. This is an option which says that, you know, uh, maybe the eldest son is, uh, maybe the eldest son would have stolen the money, reason being uh, he wanted more pocket money and he suddenly stopped asking for it. Now, when somebody suddenly stops asking for it, which means the person's needs are met, right? So, somewhere this uh, option or this point is clearly indicating that it might be the eldest son who might be stealing the money from their pockets, okay? Now in the last one year, Vimla had received mails from her family asking for money. Now, this shows a very pressing need that Vimla needs the money, okay? Now, we can't be very clear, but yeah, if Vimla needs money, if there's a, you know, very important need for money, and that to being a house help, Right, then this also indicates something towards the fact that maybe Vimla would have stolen the money. So point number C is indicating towards the eldest son's needs were higher. So maybe point number C says that eldest son is uh, stealing the money. And point number D talks about Vimla needs more money. So point number D is talking about Vimla's needs to be higher. So maybe if this is the case, then Vimla would have stolen the money. Now her eldest son's expenditure had gone up in the last few days. Now, if I combine C and E, right, even E is talking about eldest son's expenditure. Now, if eldest son's expenditure has gone up, if I connect E and C, right, which means he might need more pocket money, right, and suddenly he stopped asking for pocket money, right. So, C and E are together pointing out that, you know, the eldest son would have stolen the money. So, this is what the caselet is talking about. We need to be very clear when we read the caselet and understand the points here. Now, let's get the question statement here. Which of the following combinations of the above statements would decrease the likelihood that Vimla has stolen the money? Now, if I want to decrease the likelihood of Vimla stealing the money, that means I need to see that either someone else is stealing the money Right. So let's look at the options now. Option A and C. Now A and C. In last one year, she noticed cash which is missing, which means this is talking about stealing is evident. Okay. And C is also talking about son's need. So A and C are clear that okay, it's not Vimla. It is the son who is doing it. So let's keep A and C on hold. Now A and D. If I look at A and D, 
D is pressing the need that Vimla needs more money and if Vimla needs more money then that increases the likelihood of Vimla stealing the money right but the question is asking you what would decrease the likelihood of Vimla stealing the money so option 2 definitely increases the likelihood of Vimla stealing money so we'll rule out option 2. Now A and E. A and E in last one year Shreya noticed that the cash is missing and her eldest son's expenditure has gone up so this is also indicating that eldest son has stolen the money. And if somebody else has stolen the money, which will automatically decrease the likelihood of Vimla stealing the money. Okay. So this is also somewhere right. Now B and D again, the minute D is involved, it is increasing the likelihood of Vimla stealing the money. So therefore B and D goes for a toss. Clear? Now C and E. C and E are talking about the eldest son's needs. Now among A, C, A, E and C, E, as I already told you that if I combine C and E, right? Then C and E together, C and E together are indicating that there is a very important need of the eldest son, right? And maybe that is the reason that the eldest son would have been desperate and maybe he has stolen the money. So this is talking about the highest chance of eldest son stealing the money. Clear? So all the three options are close. I repeat option 1 is also right, option 3 is also right and option 5 is also right. But we need to understand which is the most pressing need here. So option 5 that is C and E together talk about that the eldest son's needs were a lot more higher. And therefore together both of them this will indicate that the eldest son has stolen the money. If it is, uh, if it is indicating that the eldest son has stolen the money which means it would decrease the likelihood that Vimla has stolen the money. So according to this option 5 becomes the right answer. So that becomes the you know challenging part in uh, decision making. If you observe three options are indicating that eldest son has stolen the money but out of those three there is one option which is talking about you know a higher probability that the eldest son has stolen the money and therefore that becomes a required answer. Now this same case had one more question here. Let's look at the next question here. Now the same case. Now the question number two says Padma discovered some money missing from her purse. Now Padma is the neighbor of Vimla. Okay. Now she suspects that Vimla has stolen or she is also su suspecting that the Vimla has stolen there. Okay. Now she wants to prevent stealing from happening again and is contemplating the following actions. Now the first target is she wants to prevent stealing to happen. So let me write it as P whether P is happening or not happening. Okay. So am I able to prevent the money from being stolen? Now if I look at option A she should let it pass and since error is human since 2 error is human here. Okay. So therefore this will definitely not prevent from stealing because if I'm just ignoring the matter then it will not prevent from stealing definitely there right now. She should confront Vimla and tell her that she knows the truth and the act is unpardonable regardless of the past service and she is thinking of terminating her services. Now will this prevent of course yes because she is directly warning Vimla. So this will definitely prevent from stealing the money but I think it's a little harsh or it is not a rightful action to directly accuse her right that will look at it at a later date but if I'm looking at you know solely from the objective of preventing to steal the money yes telling Vimla directly that I know the truth will you know uh, ensure that Vimla will be more careful henceforth or if I'm taking Vimla off then that would definitely prevent from the money being stolen okay. Now she should tell Vimla that she is aware uh, she is aware someone has stolen the money from the house but it is not sure who it is. I think this is the perfect uh, you know way to deal with the situation because you don't have the proof that Vimla has stolen. At the same time you suspect that Vimla has stolen so making Vimla aware that you know somebody is stealing will make her a little more cautious that your people around her are knowing that money is being stolen so she might not steal the money henceforth. So I would find C to be a better option as compared to B but yeah if I'm talking about preventing from stealing both B and C are the options which are preventing from stealing right. She should share with Vimla that neighbors think Vimla has stolen the money though she doesn't but is interested in finding the truth. This is also a better option as compared to B right that I'm just warning Vimla somewhere trying not to bring herself but she's warning Vimla that the neighbors are thinking that the, that the uh, maid has stolen the money. 
that means the maid is being made aware so if she is stealing the money she will not steal the money henceforth so this will definitely prevent from stealing the money and also not bring the uh, you know not bring padma into bad light right but yeah bringing third party is not the right course of action but yes i think somewhere i ask compared to b i think d would be slightly better because b is very harsh on vimla right but yeah this will will this prevent from stealing yes this will def definitely prevent from stealing now she should directly ask vimla if she stole the money okay promising her that no punishment if she confesses okay so this is what we are given so option e also definitely will prevent because she will definitely ask vimla and she is also you know promising her that it will uh what will happen here that it will definitely make sure that you are not punishing her if she is confessing so it will make her feel a little better and also make her aware that she is definitely not stealing henceforth right now arrange the following combinations of the above actions in decreasing order of appropriateness now which is the most appropriate course of action and which is the least appropriate course of action now from here we need to understand what are the appropriate course of action should i did pass since to her is human yeah it's an appropriate course of action because from appropriateness this is definitely there clear she should confront that vimla and uh, tell her the truth and the act is unpardonable and so on and so on and so on so is this appropriate i would say this is okay not very appropriate so i would not go with appropriateness here right because directly confronting vimla without a proof is wrong so therefore it is not appropriate she should tell vimla that she is aware uh, that someone has stolen the money from the house but is not sure who it is yes definitely i going to me this becomes the most appropriate way of handling the situation clear so c is definitely an appropriate way of uh, handling the situation now d she is putting the blame on neighbors and somewhere directly accusing vimla now when i'm directly accusing vimla without you know uh, without a proof it does not become very appropriate but here she is indirectly indicating so will i say is it appropriate yes but somewhat appropriate okay not completely appropriate but yeah i think to some degree it is also an appropriate one because she is putting the blame that the neighbors have stole that vimla has stolen the money so we are not directly accusing vimla here now e says uh, she should directly ask vimla if she stole the money and promising her that no punishment so this uh, promising her no punishment is again appropriate because we are not being harsh on her we are just trying to con confront her saying that did you steal the money if yes please confront uh, please con con confess uh, and the punishment will not be given to you right now if i look at it option a now we need to understand there are two conditions here one is i need to prevent from stealing and one i need to bring the appropriateness right so option a and option b definitely go out of picture because option a is not preventing but it is appropriate option b is preventing but not appropriate now i need to choose between c d e now as i told you c becomes the best one because i'm neither accusing vimla nor punishing her at the same time i'm making the making her aware that stealing is happening at the home right so according to me c becomes the most or the first one as or the most appropriate and the option that will prevent her from stealing clear now if i compare between d and e clear i would always go with e in fact if i'm if i'm freezing that c d e are the ones then i can directly go with option 4 because it's only the option 4 that is talking about c d e rest all the options are talking about other other options there right but uh, why would i go with c e d because as i told you uh, directly confronting vimla or telling that vim neighbors think that vimla has stolen the money is a higher degree of accusation as compared to asking her if she stole the money right so this point makes e as a better option as compared to d so if you ask me what would be the which would be the, uh, which would be the best course of action i would go with c first the most appropriate e second appropriate and then i would go with d at the end right so this is how we solve this guys it needs a lot of thinking i'm taking you know step by step so it might seem that you are taking a lot of time to answer but yes while reading if you keep these things processing in your brain then i think things will be better to solve in the examination 
right? So let's move to the next set. So this set talks about Mrs. Biswas was able to retire in one year after servicing after serving in the construction department of Gujarat government for more than 30 years. So this statement is talking about Mrs. Biswas whose retirement is due in one year and she has uh, ec an experience with the construction department for more than 30 years. That means she comes with huge experience in the construction department. Now after retirement she wanted to spend her retired life along with Mr. Biswas who is a retired school teacher in a small town in Kerala. So Mr. Biswas is a retired school teacher. Okay. Now they had two children both studying in Bengaluru. The Biswas wished to construct a house in Kerala with their life savings. Okay. So they, the couple gathered information about owning a house in Kerala. They had four options. Buy a fully furnished house from a big developer. Okay. Option B says buy a semi furnished house from a big developer and furnish it. Okay. Option C says get a local unregistered con contractor to construct a house and furnish it. Okay. And Mr. Biswas with inputs from the family could supervise the construction of a house back in Kerala by employing the best material, engineers, masons and laborers. Okay. Now let's look at the options here. Which, of the, which option would ensure the best control of quality of construction for the Biswas? Now if I want to control the quality, if I buy a furnished house from a big developer, this will definitely not give me a control over quality because all the things when we talk about taking a house from a big developer, every quality check or every specification is mentioned by the developer itself and the buyer does not have an option to do too many changes in the uh, quality. So this definitely does not give me a quality control. Now buy a semi furnished house from a big developer and furnish it. Now here in the construction side, okay, there will not be any control over the quality. But yes, if I'm taking a semi furnished house, then at least in terms of interiors, because you get the interiors done by yourself, in terms of interiors, there will be a control over quality. So according to me, there is a partial scope or there is a partial control over quality if I go to the second option. Now get a local unregistered contractor to construct a house and furnish it. This is as good as going with the first one. But yes, we do not know if the if the contractor is a good one or not a good one. Right. So it, the quality control will again depend on the reputation of the contractor. So option C definitely does not give me the quality control. So we look at option D. I think option D suits the best here. Mr. Biswas with inputs from the family could supervise the construction of house in Kerala by employing the best material engineers, masons and laborers. So this becomes the best option because they can minutely, you know, monitor on a daily basis in case there is any change in quality. They can also rectify them and also ensure that they make the house according to a choice of their own. So in this case, it's a very easy question, not a too, you know, not a question that will bring you in too much of dilemma. So therefore, option four becomes the best option to ensure that the quality control is being done. Now let's look at the next question here. Now which of the following additional information if true would improve the chances of third option being preferred. Okay. Now let's try to understand. Now based on the current information no additional information is required. The third option is the best option. Of course this is not your answer because as we saw if we need to ensure quality control then option 4 becomes the best course of action. Right. Now among the local property holders the contractor in the third option enjoys a good reputation. Now this is something which is helping option C or point C to be considered because if the if among the local property holders the contractor holds a very good reputation which means the contractor would be constructing house which will you know which is satisfying the quality check of all the you know local property holders and there's a assumption that you know when we get the house made by him the house will be made in a good quality check as well. So therefore if I need to choose option C the only problem with option C was I do not know the reputation of the unregistered contractor. So this holds open for some time that okay that option C can be considered if the reputation of the contractor is good. Now big developers are less open to changes in design. This is talking about big developers. With this option I can say that option 1 and option 2 will not be considered. Because when they are saying there are less changes to design, less open to changes in design which means they will not 
be open to any quality check that we are talking about so therefore option C or uh, option 3 does not work here now Mr. Biswas cannot stay back alone to supervise the construction again this makes option 1 and option 2 and maybe option 3 also clear uh, a little stronger but here option 1 also becomes equally considered option 2 also becomes equally considered and option 3 also becomes equally considered but uh, let's keep it on hold as of now we'll come back to it when we compare with option 2 now the Biswas wants to select a furniture of their own if they want to select a furniture of their own then they should be going for option 2 where they take a semi furnished house from the big developer so this is no way giving us or even if this goes with option 3 but the construction quality is not being ensured here clear so therefore option 5 goes for a toss now on the same premise if Mr. Biswas cannot stay back alone to supervise the construction that means they have to outsource the construction to someone right so if they have to outsource the construction then option A option B and option C become the right one but if I need to ensure a quality check then option uh, uh, you know uh, points number one and points number two that is buying a fully furnished house from a big developer becomes a better choice than giving the construction to an unregistered contractor right so this weakens this point with us right so as I told you that if I look at all the four options the you know the challenge in option C is I do not know the reputation of the unregistered contractor right so therefore according to me option 2 if I am assured of the fact that the unregistered contractor has a very good reputation that would make me choose for that option because that will ensure that I might get a house with a good quality here right so there's a slight dilemma but yes if you're a, a bit careful then I think all the options will be ruled out and option 2 becomes the right answer now let's look at the last question in this case the Kerala government recently announced a policy in case of a major quality infringement the bar the builder will pay a penalty of 50 percent of the price of the house in addition to the price of the house wow to the client within one year of notice okay great now rank in ascending order the options that would ensure the quality the control over quality now here I should be first looking at the fact that if it's a big developer clear if it's a big developer then the government will have a control over the developer so if I'm talking about big developers if I get my house made from the big developers right then I can be assured of a quality or even if I'm not assured of the quality I get the money back along with 50% of the price of the house so A and B become a stronger course of action here right now when I go to C if I'm by if I'm getting my house done from an unregistered contractor now remember it's an unregistered contractor so even the government will not be able to help even if the quality check is not in place right so this becomes the least likely statement or the, this becomes the last option that I should be going ahead with since the question is asking you ascending order of control over quality that means I need to first choose the option that I would definitely not go for right so C is the option that, that, that I should definitely not go for because if the quality gets compromised then my money will also be at risk because an unregistered contractor will not come under the purview of the government right so therefore option C becomes my first choice in ascending order of options and if you look at the options here it's only option 3 that starts with C and no other option starts with C so that makes my child you know the option C becomes a very important source that unregistered contractor is the least likelihood then I buy a furnished house from a developer now the, the problem with the furnished houses I cannot have a control over quality even in terms of interiors so that makes it A as the second least uh, preferred option then I go with B because B gives me a partial control so B is the third possible course of action and the best course of action to control quality is simple option D that you have to get the house done by yourself by supervising everything and ensuring that the quality of the house is as per our understanding right so that's it from this session guys uh, we had two good caselets right five questions uh, I hope you learned how to carefully analyze the options, how to carefully analyze the points given to us. 
right and in the coming sessions also i'll also take you through the same sets or similar sets from the previous zat papers and also help you understand what should be the parameters to look at while looking at the options and considering the points which will help us become very good at decision making abilities right so thank you guys all the best take care